In this module, we will discuss the use of contrast in pregnant or breastfeeding women. At the end of this module, you should know the different types of contrast and be able to differentiate between which types of contrast are used for CT and MRI. You should also be able to identify and describe the risks associated with intravenous contrast use in pregnancy and in breastfeeding women. We will start with a discussion of oral contrast. Oral contrast is used to opacify or distend the bowel and make lesions of the bowel or mesentery more readily apparent. It is not essential for making the diagnosis in many cases, but can aid in diagnostic sensitivity. The main issue with oral contrast is that many sick patients do not tolerate it. If you have symptoms of nausea or vomiting or abdominal pain, having to ingest a moderate to large volume of fluid can be difficult. Oral contrast is not readily absorbed by the GI tract, so there is minimal exposure to the fetus, and it is of minimal risk for use in pregnant women. Other types of contrast, such as rectal contrast or intravesicular contrast, are similar in their composition to oral contrast and also pose minimum risk to the pregnant woman or fetus, although they are rarely necessary. Overall, the recommendation for use of oral contrast in pregnant or breastfeeding women is that it is safe, but it's poorly tolerated and often unnecessary. Intervenous contrast is contrast which is injected through an IV to opacify the vessels and cause enhancement of the solid organs. It is much more essential than oral contrast, particularly with CT. On CT, a non-contrast examination has poor differentiation between the different types of soft tissue and intravenous contrast helps improve that differentiation and is often essential for detecting injuries, lesions, masses, or characterizing fluid collections. Intravenous contrast used with CT is iodine based and is often referred to as iodinated IV contrast. Magnetic resonance imaging uses a different type of contrast that's unrelated to the IV iodinated contrast. It is a gadolinium based contrast and does not have cross reactivity with allergic reactions. MRI is different than CT in that non-contrast examinations provide good differentiation between soft tissue structures, fluid filled structures, and bone. Therefore, MRI contrast is less important than CT contrast for making the diagnosis. When using intravenous contrast, there are multiple considerations that can impact the pregnant or breastfeeding woman. Let's pause for a quick question. What type of contrast is most important for the characterization of pathology? Pause for a moment, look at the answers, and decide which one you believe is correct. The correct answer is B. Answer A, oral contrast, is rarely essential for the diagnosis. It can help with diagnosing bowel perforation, but is not essential even for the diagnosis of bowel perforation. Intravenous CT contrast aids in the detection of vascular injuries, organ injuries, soft tissue masses, and characterization of fluid collections, and results in a much more sensitive and specific study than a non-contrast CT. Therefore, it is more essential for the characterization of a wide range of pathologies. Intravenous contrast is not as important for MRI because good soft tissue contrast differentiation is possible with non-contrast MRI. Rectal contrast is rarely used, typically with penetrating trauma to the pelvis, to evaluate whether the rectum has been hit by a bullet or stabbed by a knife or other penetrating object. It is rarely used in pregnant women and is only used in very specific indications, often in the emergency department or after bowel surgery. Let's focus in on the different types of intravenous contrast. Iodinated IV contrast, which is used with CT examinations, is often essential for characterization of a wide range of pathology. When we think of the use of IV contrast in pregnant women, the risk to the mother is similar to baseline risk in a non-pregnant woman. 
The most common adverse reactions include nausea, vomiting, flushing, and pain at the injection site, and tend to be minor. The serious adverse reaction is often an allergic reaction. We know that allergic reactions can be dangerous, and we can treat these with pre-medication, which will be discussed on a future slide. Intravenous iodinated contrast poses minimal risk to the fetus. We do know that it crosses the placenta, it enters fetal circulation, and the fetus is exposed to the iodinated contrast. There is no evidence of teratogenesis or mutagenesis from IV contrast in multiple retrospective studies. There was a theoretical concern for exposure of the developing thyroid to iodine from intravenous contrast. However, there is no documented evidence of harm or cases of hypothyroidism related to intravenous contrast exposure to the fetus. In breastfeeding women, there is no need to stop breastfeeding after the administration of intravenous contrast as very little of the IV contrast is secreted into the breast milk and what little is secreted into the breast milk is poorly absorbed by the infant's GI tract. Overall, intravenous iodinated contrast for CT examinations is very low risk. We do like to avoid the use of contrast in pregnant women unless it's necessary, but with CT, it is often necessary. The most common time that you'll be using intravenous iodinated contrast in a pregnant woman is for a CT PE protocol. Gadolinium intravenous contrast is used for MRI examinations. It is of a different composition and has different risk factors compared to intravenous iodinated contrast. When thinking of the pregnant woman, there is no substantial increased risk over the baseline risk with use of intravenous gadolinium contrast. As long as the patient's renal function is normal and their glomerular filtration rate is above 30, intravenous contrast is safe to the mother. There is increasing concern about free gadolinium deposition related to IV contrast use, and this applies to the whole population. If a patient has a GFR less than 30, there is an even increased risk of gadolinium deposition, and this can lead to a rare disorder that is extremely debilitating called nephrogenic systemic fibrosis. And that is why we often do not administer IV gadolinium contrast to people with GFRs less than 30. The fetal risk of administration of IV gadolinium contrast is relatively unknown and poorly studied. What we do know is that it crosses the placenta, it enters fetal circulation, and then it is excreted through the kidneys and the urinary bladder into the amniotic fluid. This results in long lasting exposure of the fetus to the IV gadolinium contrast. While there is no evidence of teratogenesis or mutagenesis from exposure to IV gadolinium contrast, there have been small retrospective studies that showed increased adverse effects, predominantly related to rheumatoid conditions, inflammatory conditions, and skin conditions. There was also a small increase in stillbirths. Because of this, and because of the relative lack of data with the use of IV gadolinium contrast in pregnant women, we do not recommend or routinely use intravenous gadolinium contrast during pregnancy. In breastfeeding women, there is no need to stop breastfeeding after the administration of intravenous gadolinium contrast, as very little of the gadolinium is excreted into the breast milk, and what is excreted into the breast milk is not absorbed by the GI tract. Overall, a recommendation for use of intravenous gadolinium contrast in pregnant women is that we should not use it in pregnant women. That is our institutional policy, and that is the most common policy that you will encounter in the United States. There are some newer gadolinium agents that are being used in Europe and in limited supply in the United States, which some people believe may be safe in pregnancy, but again, there is very little data to support the use. And because gadolinium contrast is often not essential for diagnosis in MRI, it is more of an aid or assistance in making the diagnosis or increasing our specificity, we do not recommend the use of IV gadolinium contrast in pregnant women. 
Let's stop for a question. What type of contrast is typically contraindicated in pregnancy? Look at the answers, think of the correct answer, and then we'll proceed. So the correct answer is C, intravenous MRI contrast, which is gadolinium based. So oral contrast is not significantly absorbed by the GI tract and has little or no exposure to the fetus. Intravenous CT contrast crosses the placenta, but has no documented adverse effects other than those related to allergic reactions. Intravenous MRI contrast is poorly understood and poorly studied in pregnant women, and because it crosses the placenta and remains for a long time in the amniotic fluid, there is theoretical concern for adverse effects on the fetus and some data supporting increased incidence of adverse effects. It is therefore contraindicated in pregnancy. Rectal contrast is similar to oral contrast, and while is infrequently used, it is not contraindicated for pregnancy. We are now gonna shift gears and discuss premedication for allergy. We often encounter patients who have reported allergies to intravenous contrast. This is most commonly an allergy to iodinated intravenous contrast. Patients may also report sensitivities or allergies to food, such as nuts, peanuts, or shellfish. There's no evidence of cross-reactivity between food allergies and iodinated contrast or gadolinium contrast. We do know that an anaphylactic reaction in a pregnant woman is more dangerous for the fetus than for the pregnant woman. Because of this, the American College of Radiology recommends that women with documented allergies to IV iodinated contrast or documented allergies to other medications be pre-medicated prior to administering IV contrast or other IV medications. It is recommended that this standard regimen be used. The standard regimen typically consists of an antihistamine and a steroid. The most common antihistamine to use is diphenhydramine. This is felt to be relatively safe in pregnancy and is a pregnancy class B. The most common steroids to be used are prednisone and dexamethasone. These are not well studied in pregnant women, but are generally felt to be safe, are commonly administered, and have no documented adverse outcomes. Methylprednisone, which may be used for IV administration of steroids, is considered pregnancy class C. There is small studies that show increased evidence of cleft lip and palate after administration of methylprednisone, but this risk is relatively small. Overall, it is felt that the risk of an anaphylactic reaction in a woman who has documented allergy to intravenous contrast outweighs any risks of the administration of an antihistamine or steroid, and therefore premedication is recommended. I would say that if the patient does have a contrast allergy, you may consider a non-contrast examination or an alternative study or diagnostic test prior to the administration of contrast. The ACR recommends pre-medication of pregnant patients with a documented allergic reaction to a specific IV contrast prior to administration of that contrast. Is this true or false? This is true. So while there may be risks to the fetus from steroid administration, the current opinion is that the risk of anaphylaxis for the fetus is greater than the risk of steroid administration. In summary, oral contrast has no increased risk in pregnant women compared to non-pregnant women, and there is no risk to the fetus. Intravenous CT contrast, which is iodine-based, is safe unless there is a known allergy. We should try to avoid unnecessary use of CT and CT contrast in pregnant women, but if it is required, it can be administered safely. If there is a known allergy, pre-medication is recommended. Intravenous MRI contrast, which is gadolinium-based, is poorly studied and the risks are unknown. It should be avoided in pregnant women due to the potential risks to the fetus. Luckily, it is not as important as CT contrast for the diagnosis as non-contrast MRI provides good soft tissue differentiation. Thank you for listening to this module. If you need additional information, please refer to the ACR Manual on Contrast Media or the ACOG Committee Opinion 
guidelines for diagnostic imaging during pregnancy and lactation.